Hi, I'm Andrew with Baker's Gas. We're here today with the all-new Aesop Rogue 200i Pro. So this is the big big brother in the Rogue family on the Aesop side of things. So uh, this unit, in this video, we're going to go over what it comes with, uh, all the accessories that we, you know, that it has in the box. Um, we're going to weld with it. We're going to go over the functionality on the front panel. And uh, hopefully we, this thing welds just as good as the rest of them. All right, let's dive right into it. So out of the box, we get, we get our regulator. Stinger and stick electrode holder there. We get our TIG kit with uh, tungsten nozzles, back caps, that sort of thing, collet, collet body. We get our TIG torch. We get our gas hose that goes from regulator to gas cylinder or to the back of the machine. And then we get our ground clamp and then we get this adapter. Now I'll go over that adapter here in a minute. Um, and also you get the 110 220 adapter. So once again, all, all these ESOBs, they come with the 220 plug already and then you get this adapter to go to 110. So this unit, 200 amps, um, I, and at duty cycle on 220 is 25% at 200 amps, and duty cycle on 110 is 110 amps at 25% duty cycle. So it, it, you get a little bit limited duty cycle on 110 or amperage on 110, but it still welds just fine. There again, it has power factor correction. We can put a 300 foot extension cord on it and weld on 110 or 220 without losing any of our capabilities on the duty cycle side of things. So we got it, we got it on here. Let's jump into the menu. So um, I got the TIG torch hooked up because I'm going to show some functionality here in a minute. So this is, it says HF TIG. It has a little picture. So high frequency start is what this has. This is a DC only machine. Um, so no AC output, can't weld aluminum with it. It's just a DC only. So that's just a high freak start. So all that means is it's jumping the arc, starting the arc with high frequency um, instead of the next function, which is lift arc, TIG, or scratch start, live arc. Uh, there's multiple names. So all that is is you touch the tungsten to the workpiece and you pull up and it initiates the arc. Then we have our stick electrode um, function here. Now on this, if you hold it down, we got hot start, arc force, and then cellulose, you can turn that on or off. So that's for your 6010 or cellulosic rods. So 6010, 6011, turn it on, turn it off. And then that thing will time out and it'll go back. So it times out automatically, goes back to your amperage setting. And then we'll go over here to this, this side of thing. Oh, we gotta be on TIG. So this is for your TIG functionality on the torch. So up top here, we got 2T or 4T. Oh, sorry about that, 2T or 4T. So that's just a, um, on this TIG torch, if we go on 2T, that is, you gotta hold that button down. Get back to it. You gotta, the entire time while you're welding. So you gotta hold that down. If you go 4T, it's just a on and then off. So it's a on off, it's a four tap trigger system is what it is. Um, go down here. So this is the pulser. Uh, this thing does DC pulse and you can turn it on and then we can you gotta have it on to get to the next function. So then that's Hertz. And that's how many pulses per second. And we can go all the way up to 500 pulses per second. Now, a lot of people ask where, where do I wanna use DC pulse at? Um, it's good on for, uh, you know, distortion of heat, um, autogenous welding, which is just no filler material. If you're just seam welding something, stainless, it works really well on. Or some people like to time out their dabs on their puddles when they're welding, when they're in filler metal, and it just helps with that too. So kind of a very nice function to have if you ever need it. So we'll get out of that and go back over here. And then, so that it it's limited to 110 amps, right? Because we're at a 20% due cycle, we're on 110 right now. So let's go over a little functionality here on the TIG torch. So we got to say that we're on high frequency start. So you can see here, it's got the TIG torch. They got that on off button, right? When we're welding, you can hear the high freak kick in when I punch that. So if you watch the screen, as I turn that knob, I can bring, it's a remote amperage control basically at, at my thumb. So I don't have to go back and adjust it here. I can adjust it right here on the TIG torch. Now, one good thing to note is that when I, if I have this thing set at 70 amps, that is the max I can go is 70 amps. I can't go any higher than 70 amps. So you've got to go back to the machine 
and turn it back up so you can then you can remotely adjust it. So the, the remote's only going to adjust to the amount of amperage you have set on the on the unit. Pretty neat little uh, setup. I mean, really a pretty comfortable TIG torch. Nice leather cover here for the first three feet, and then it's got a uh, heavy duty rubber cover on there. Really, really pretty nice. 50 millimeter DENS connection, so you got peak current transfer. Another unique thing to this TIG torch, so it's an SR26F, meaning it's a flex neck, so we can we can flex that TIG torch any which way we want. And that comes standard on this package. It's not an upgrade, comes right in it. Awesome little TIG torch. Other than that, um, we got a, uh, we're gonna give this thing a shot. We're gonna stick weld and TIG weld with it. And one more thing to note on this is that this little adapter, now everybody asks me these questions about what's this adapter? Why do I have this extra brass piece? It doesn't fit anything. Well, it does. So on the front of the machine, this thing has a built-in gas solenoid for your TIG torch. So you don't have to turn the, the valve on. You know, some TIG torches have a valve you gotta turn, but this thing will thread right into the front. So if you have an existing TIG torch that you like, um, you can just, it just takes a regular inert fitting. So it's just an adapter, so you could plug in another TIG torch um, if you have one, an existing one. Pretty unique. Nice little piece of adapt. I mean, that was that's a good touch. I really like that. But other than that, you don't need the adapter for this TIG torch because it has the fitting already on there for the gas. So let's give this thing a shot. We'll go outside and weld with it. All right. So we got this uh, uh, 200 out here. We got the TIG torch hooked up to it. Um, ready to go. Got some stainless steel here. We're gonna try it out on. I got 140 amps on the machine. Um, we're on 110 volts. We're on a 110 extension cord. Let's give this thing a shot here. I'm just gonna do a corner weld, just to, might add some filler, might not. I, let's give it a shot here. Now I got it set up for a four tap trigger, so it's just one click on, one click off, so. So that was just a fusion weld with no no filler material. Let's try it with some filler here. Yeah. That was with some filler. Now let's give this thing a shot. We'll we'll come down here. We're gonna turn the pulser on. And then we're gonna go for how many here? We're at 0 0.2. Let's go up to one pulse per second. And I'll, you guys will see a difference in the wall. Okay? Get that piece of material here. So that was a one pulse per second. You can kind of see where it gives me that current burst. Let's try. Let's try ten pulses per second. You can see there, 10 pulses per second is a very drastic change. Now let's just try and let's turn it up to 500 and to see what it, it, it'll really start to scream. It makes a real high pitch noise here. Yeah. It's 500. So we want to come check, check out this piece of material. So 
what do we, what is the difference between the pulse settings? What do we want to do on it? So that, that one pulse per second, they give you a nice ripple effect and when you add the filler material at each pulse. This was 10 pulses per second, and that was 500 pulses per second. So that's good for like real thin material. Uh, the, more, the higher you go up in the pulses per second, is, it's generally thinner material. Um, some, some applications along those lines, but awesome little TIG welder. I mean, I really like that that torch is nice. I like the way you can adjust your amperage right from the remote here. Um, 140 amps again on 110 on a 50 foot extension cord. So awesome little machine. Um, let me give, uh, let me get this all hooked up and we're gonna try stick welding with it here next. All right, so we got, got the stick electrode hooked up. So that whole little holder and ground. I got eighth inch 7018, we're at 120 amps. Um, we're gonna give this a shot here. Very nice, 120 amps, arc start was beautiful, real nice. Turn on the cellulose. On. And hot start. I'm just gonna give that a shot. Now this is 332nd. I'm turn down to 60. Give it a shot on me. Good, good arc start again. Um, I mean, super, super smooth on that 6010. That's impressive. That's impressive. Now I will note, we did plug it in the 220 just to give it a shot, see what it did. Um, we TIG welded on 110, but we stick weld on 220. Awesome stuff. That little machine's pretty sweet. All in all, this unit's capable of a lot of things. I mean, it is awesome for what it is, the package. Um, so the price on that unit is uh, $18.49, and you can add a foot pedal later on, but it comes with all the TIG stuff, and uh, it has a remote start on the TIG, which we showed, but the foot pedal is about $2.39. So if you've got any questions, comments, anything, leave them down below. We'll do our best to answer them. Awesome little machine. Thanks again for watching, and stay tuned for some more. We're gonna push this little Esob Rogue 200 to the to the max. We got it at 200 amps um, on 220, and I, here I got quarter inch 7024 jet weld. So we're gonna give it a shot. This stuff runs recommended between 250 and 300 amps. Um, John, you think it'll do it? I don't know. My my uh, 7024 is gonna run 350 to 400. Oh really? So. If you look at our like spec sheets yeah. on it, yeah, it's okay. I don't know. Let's give it a shot. Right. I'll let you do the answers here. 
Well, you know what? I think I'm going to turn the arc force way up on this too. Okay. So, switch it over to stick. Let's go to arc force, crank it up, and I'll set the hot start as well. I'm going to need as much as I can get out of it, I think. So, we're on 220 volt now. So, let's give her a shot. Oh, you got the rod already and everything. It fits in the electro motor. I know, it's amazing. And that quarter inch, I think. Let's see. All right. Don't laugh at me if it doesn't work. Here we go. It's a little cold, but it's maintaining a dang arc. Holy smoke. I try to break it, run the whole rod. Yeah. My elbow's getting hot. Holy smokes! Wow. I wonder how many. Oh, we're gonna have to check the time on that. That's pretty impressive. Wow. So you saw there, at, at quarter inch, 7024. We're at 200 amps, that's the max on that unit, but we're at 220 volts too, so. We got a good power supply, but man, that's, a, that's pretty impressive. I'd say it's a little cold, obviously, yeah, <laughs> but, the front, but, yeah, towards but the it, it maintained an arc. And then when I when I increased the arc length right here, it really kind of started to wet out yep. a little bit more. Yep. That's impressive. That's impressive. It ran a whole rod. Okay. I wonder what the time was on that. That's right. that's cool. Well, thank you, cool. I appreciate that. No problem. Yeah. Thanks, for yeah. well, thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned for some more.